Yeah! Hello, people of the internet world. Today, I'm gonna continue trying to tune this Ranger. I've got it to idle smoothly, successfully. So now I'll move on to the driving portion. Where I last left off, I was able to tune the standalone ECU to get the truck to idle perfectly with or without the air conditioning on and start up. If you're new and you missed out on that video up above my head is something that you should not lick. Light bulb sockets, don't lick light bulb sockets. Since I'm gonna drive this thing, I really don't want my cruise control diaphragm just bouncing around in here. Put this thing down on the ground. Sound like dolphins Yeah, that's gonna pinch those wires. I don't, I don't like that at all. I gotta come up with something better. So that hole down inside there is where the factory PCM sits, where this needs to sit. Problem is, there is really no way to access that cavity from inside the driver footwell. Flashlight test. Ah, I see light. Actually, I bet it's behind here. Aha, uh -huh. there's the PCM cavity. Dark as fuck. Ha! I got it. It's plugged in. You can barely see it, but it's plugged in. Question is, can it go in all the way like that? But, can I get this over it? No way. Hell yeah. All right, I got everything set up. Now I can do a couple data logs around the parking lot. Haven't filmed a car view in like six weeks, so it means unfortunately I don't have any GoPros here with me. Gonna have to do this the old school way. So I got my table up right now, idling nice right there. Uh, let's just try start logging. Test. I've never done this before, so it's gonna be trial and error. Logging. Literally already running and driving better than it did on the factory ECU. Here is my log. And there's my data log. Oh, it doesn't show the VE table. That's what I wanted to see. This is really difficult to try to learn and film at the same time. I've just spent like 25 minutes trying to figure out how to get a VE table up there so I can see what my log is. I don't know why this just dawned on me now, but this wideband is connected to the laptop, not the ECU. So therefore, this cannot input data into a VE table. It's already almost four o'clock in the evening. I haven't filmed much today. This is a really difficult thing to try to make a YouTube video out of. Welcome to A Day and a Half Later. I educated myself a bit more on the YouTubes last night. This tuning scenario is going to be a two-person job to street tune. Right now, I just got this wideband sensor hooked up temporarily to the driver side bank of three cylinders in place of the factory narrow band O2. According to the tech data that came with the standalone, I can tune this with a external wideband like I have. However, it makes it more difficult and I cannot use the auto tune feature, which I didn't really care to use anyway. If I wanted to permanently wire in a wideband O2, I'd have to find the leaner of the two banks of cylinders and then add a five volt reference because the factory narrowband O2s on this are a four wire system and the wire that they miss is that five volt reference. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hello, assistant Charlie. Howdy. To do this safely, it's a two-person job. One of us will be focusing on the laptop and the wideband. The other one will be just focused solely on driving. Charlie is going to man the laptop and the gauges in the wideband. Yep. Okay. Ready? Yep. 
be hard to do without my GoPro. Yeah. I'm blending this table right here where I made some changes. Okay. For the AFR. Yeah. So this little base map is already pretty spot on for the tune. Like it's pretty good. There's a little wizard in here that's actually pretty cool if you go to tools. VE table generator and then you can put in all your information and it gets you close-ish. It's idling smoother than it has ever idled since I got this truck in my possession. I'll see if I can replicate it again before I make any changes. Every vehicle I've ever owned before that I've done a custom tune on has been forced induction. This is way easier to tune. We've done about five or six passes now, just working out different areas of the load cells. I think the only thing that's left to really work on though is the transient fueling area. Fueling, like, yeah, there's one little funky spot, like when you make the first to second shift that kind of hiccups every once in a while. Okay. Did you mess with the ignition tables at all or is it mostly just VE table? Uh, I've been adding one or two degrees here and there when you go wide open throttle and we're at like 33. I definitely think having the wideband integrated into the mega squirt instead of doing it isolated like we're doing would make things easier, but it's not really essential tuning something like this. No, Makes 160 horsepower. No variable valve timing, yeah. cast iron block and heads. Yep. It's like kind of idiot proof. Yeah, I mean, it would, it would physically not run before you could mess this up bad enough to do something. Okay, I'm going to work on one of those one-two shifts, right? Everything looks good to me. You get the credit for tuning today because you were working the laptop, so. Oh, thank you. You did good job. Thank I you. just drove. <laughs> okay. There was one missing component to complete the restoration of my Graham's Ranger, and that's my added splash. Get it, splash because they had a Ranger Splash model. The original deer hoof wheels on the truck were never restored. You can see there's all kinds of pitting in the clear coach. The backside on them also super nasty and some pitting on there. And just overall, it could use a refinishing. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be the only person in the world that's ever done this before. And if you've done it before, speak up. My grandma always said I had good taste in shoes, so I'm pretty sure she would have approved of this. Just, just a slight. <laughs> yeah. Da -da. These are a set of two-piece Workmeister wheels in the factory size and just slightly different offset, a matter of 12 millimeters difference than the factory wheels. I went with silver to keep it super subtle and clean looking like the factory look, except this is probably a little bit lighter. I did measure the center bore twice to make sure it would clear, but I just wanna make sure just in case. Oh, it doesn't. It's cause it's got a slight taper to it, but I measured up here. So why? That fits perfect. So the rear clears, no problem. Like 70 and a half of a millimeter, 70.5. So it's less than a millimeter difference because it's half of what I measured on either side. So literally less than a millimeter needs to be removed to get it past that little bit of a lip. I didn't even take an account for a center cap. I didn't think about that because the wheels hub bore, you would think it'd be that same diameter all the way through. Good thing I know somebody with uh, machine shop capabilities. Halfway. So literally you need to take off less than one millimeter circumference around it, right? Oh, it's a very small amount, yeah. The original one is a two inch 772, and the one that we just machined is two inch 735. 
So how much are you taking off total? Like 38 thousandths of an inch. That was the if, the difference? Yeah. Moment of truth. Sweet. Yep, that's a dead match. Oh, my stomach's growling bad. You can't hear that though, because I'm talking. So I'm gonna keep talking so you can't hear my stomach growling. So the next day, Charlie offered to help out with mounting and balancing the wheels to save me some time today. So. If you guys can recommend any good places to get factory wheels refurbished, let me know in the comment section below because I want to get these refurbished. You know what stinks? I have to wash the truck after this so those wheels are going to get all wet again. Get these prepped before I put the decals on. So that is bottom. That goes there. I'm so nervous doing this. I don't want to fuck up. Yes. Now second decal. This one goes down here on the lip. That static electricity is fucking me up here. I say that's good. Carefully, perfect. I was a few mils off on one of the work decals, so I ordered an extra one just so I can redo it because I am a perfectionist. Ceramic coat. I did something dumb. I have to wash this still. I can't get the wheels wet once the ceramic coating's on them for 24 hours. I have a solution. I didn't film prepping the wheels uh, for coating, but they are prepped, just FYI. Man, does that look good. That is so glossy already. Can't even tell I did anything to it. Carefully. Hell yeah. So, 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 so good. Careful. That looks absolutely fucking fire. Absolute fire. Hub, same color as the brake caliper, the caliper bracket, black, ties that in. The blue work decal matches the upper part of the blue and purple stripe. Yeah. Let me get this thing rinsed off and then I'll let you see. Real quick, it'll be a fast time lapse. a set of 15 by 7 plus 10 Workmeister S1s on a 94 Ford Ranger 4x4. I don't think anyone's ever done this before. I decided to go with something super similar to the stock spec wheel because I wanted this to look like someone styled this truck in the era of when this thing was new in 94. And I know this wheel exactly might not have been available then, but it's pretty period correct looking, I think. Especially in the silver with the polished lip. I just think it fits the truck because it's so close to what was on there. And again, it's a positive 10, so it's super close to the OE spec. It's pretty close to being flush, but I wanted it to be like stock spec. I didn't want crap flying all over the side of the truck. So, yeah, super happy with how that turned out. I may do a leveling kit in the front just to bring up the rake a tiny bit and then I'll be able to clear a 31105 on this thing which I think would just fill it out perfect. 
And here's one quick shot from the backside. The rest you're gonna have to wait till I do the car view. Now I can say the Ranger is ready for me to film the car review on it. It runs great. I'm gonna continue to tweak the cold start on it when the temperatures get even colder just to make sure that part of the tune is perfect. And by the time you guys are seeing this video, the Beetle should be ready for me to film its car review. And on December 1st-ish, within a day or so, I will uh, announce the winner of it. So I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.